Hi, I'm Kat. I'm from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. Some of you might know me from coming to a webinar in the past or live event in the past. And I'm uh, tuning in from Brooklyn, New York. Today, we're going to make a really, really lovely dinner with Pacific halibut. You could really make this for lunch too, because it's actually pretty quick and easy. The recipe of the week is a seared Pacific halibut with a creamy peppercorn sauce. This is sort of a riff on a French bistro classic. It's called like steak au poivre. Uh, some of you might've had that before. Basically it just means steak with pepper. So um, instead of using steak steak, we're using the steakiest white fish of Alaska, which is Pacific halibut. Um, I literally have a halibut steak here as well as a um, halibut filet, just because I wanted to show you how it works with both of them. I picked this recipe because I think halibut and this creamy peppercorn sauce are the perfect food couple, if food can be a couple. It just feels really special too. Um, there's something about this recipe that makes it feel like a special occasion. Like I said, it's very quick. It comes together in about 20 minutes. Um, and I don't know, it just feels very luxurious. I'm going to sear a steak, which our halibut steaks are skin on, as you can see. And there's also like a bone in there, which is probably something you can't see, but you can definitely feel it. Um, the filet is probably something that most of you have cooked with before. They all can come in different sizes. Sometimes like they're less square and more rectangular. Or the steaks are generally going to be this sort of thickness, the way that they're cross cut on the fish. I picked a filet that's sort of like a similar thickness. The halibut steaks were recently an exclusive member special. Um, so some of you actually might have them in your freezer right now. This is the exact same technique, no matter whether you're using a steak or a filet. I think the main difference for me is that steaks tend to be a little bit juicier than the filets because they have that extra that extra stuff in there to protect it. So it's also a little bit easier to flip, I think, than a filet if you're grilling. If you're doing it in a skillet, it, it, for me, it doesn't make much of a difference just because it's cross cut instead of having like the grain laying a flat, flat against the skillet. But uh, let's get cooking. I'm just gonna turn here really quickly to introduce the ingredients. Halibut steak and a filet, heavy cream. I think about a quarter cup of that. Okay, this looks really weird right now, but this is just water with miso in it that's already starting to dissolve, but I'm gonna mix that together in um, a little bit. A little bit of butter for the sauce. I have this really cute, tiny molcajete that someone brought me back from Mexico, but I just use this basically as a mortar and pestle to crush up peppercorns, which are an integral part of this peppercorn sauce. Typically, this sauce is made with brandy or something like cognac, but I didn't have either of them. So I actually just made like a 50-50 mix of water and apple cider vinegar. Totally not the same thing at all, but I tried it last night and it, it sort of works um, as part of the recipe. But I'll get into that in a little bit later. Let me move this stuff out of the way so I can start cooking. All right. So... What I have here, just a stainless steel skillet. I'm going to turn this to medium high on my burner. That's the temperature that I like to sear at. We'll get a really nice solid crust going on it once this heats up. So as this is heating up, I'm going to be using just like a spoonful of ghee, which is clarified butter, essentially. This is something that is great for searing, and I'm, I'm at the bottom of my jar. Uh, nearly at the bottom of my, of my jar because I've been using this to sear scallops, anything at super high temperatures because it doesn't burn and it has a really nice flavor. I'll go ahead and put maybe a little spoonful of this in the pan. Um, whether you're using this or oil, just, just enough to get the pan coated. And with any high heat cooking oil or fat, you just want to wait for the oil to heat up and get uh, a little bit shimmery and just like on the verge of smoking. So in the meantime, with the halibut, I have already patted these dry. You want to make sure you do that anytime you're searing any species of fish. Um, you can use paper towels or, or clean kitchen towel. And I'm going to lightly season this. The sauce itself has a lot of flavor, so I would just like hold back on the salt a little bit. But I definitely don't want the sauce to be the only thing that is flavorful. I'm going to hold off on the pepper as well because we're going to put plenty of that on here later. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these fillets in. Anytime you're putting fish into the pan, just be careful, don't plop it down. But you do wanna hear, 
a nice sizzle as soon as it hits the pan. And that's all you need to do. And then just leave it alone for maybe about three minutes. While this is searing, what I can do is to show you what I'm using as the base of this sauce. It's just water with miso paste. The sauce typically is made with, I think it's beef stock because it's usually like a red meat dish, but um, I really like how miso adds a really nice savory flavor to this without, um, you know, requiring you to use something like beef or chicken stock. You're essentially just making tasty water. So um, I'm just going to set this little like miso water aside here. And I think my fish is ready to flip. I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but it's getting like a nice golden edge. I don't have a lot of room to flip in here, but this should come up pretty easily if it's ready to flip. They're actually still resisting. So I'm going to let these cook for maybe another 30 seconds to a minute until I can get this fish spatula under there without really, really having to work at it. Once I get these out of the pan, the sauce is going to come together so quickly right in the same pan. Even though I have like a lot of little bowls around, there's not a whole lot of dishes to do afterwards, like big pots and pans to make. So I mentioned that I am substituting something for brandy because I just don't happen to have brandy at home. You could also use something like bourbon, whiskey, white wine, red wine, even something like a veggie stock would be a good way to start building more flavor into the sauce. All right, let's try it open now. Pretty good. Not my best flip, but we do have some really nice color in here. That looks delicious. Seeing some like brown bond in the pan, and that's what the brandy, whatever you're using to substitute, will pick up. It'll like bring it off the pan. That's flavor that's just baked into there right now. Um, so that's gonna come off once we add some liquids to the pan. This is just going to cook for maybe another two minutes or so. Uh, the fillets are pretty thin. Like, I don't want to overcook them. Halibut can get really, really tough when it's left on the heat for too long. So if you feel like your fish is cooking a little bit too quickly, you can always dial it down once you've gotten the fillet into the pan. The important part is having the pan hot enough for that initial sear. After that, lowering the heat will just help you control the doneness a little bit better. So I just turned mine down to medium right now. Um, I feel like these might overcook if I leave it too high. You'll start to get to know what the fish looks like. It'll start looking more and more opaque as you look on the sides of the fillets. You'll start to see things look a little more flaky, especially like when you're like moving it around in the pan. So I wouldn't fuss too much with like an instant re thermometer when you're searing because everything's just happening so quickly. So I'm just going to let you sit for another minute and get my plate ready on the side here. For a dish like this, it's not written into the recipe, but it would be really, really good with some sort of vegetable on the side that you can soak up sauce with. Broccoli would be amazing. Something like potatoes if you want to go like full on carbs and cream. I had it last night when I was testing this out with just like some rice and actually that was really lovely too. Definitely not a classic pairing but we can do whatever we want as long as it tastes good, right? All right, I'm going to try to get these out of here. So we've got a little bit of stuff in here and the next thing we're going to do, if you haven't turned off or turned down your skillet yet to medium, this is the time to do it. We're going to add some butter. And this is not ghee, this is just regular butter. Since the pan is a little bit cooler right now, the butter is not going to burn. It might brown just a little bit. And you'll see the brown stuff is still sticking to the pan. This is the moment that you want to add in like a brandy or a wine or stock. Even water, honestly, will, will do a great job at taking up a lot of this flavor. And we already have some really nice color building in this sauce. Just kind of use a, uh, a wooden spoon or something like that to scrape the pan. If you're using a nonstick pan, definitely you're not going to get as much of this brown stuff sticking to it. So you might not really need to worry about this part at all. But you're also not going to get as good of a sear on the fish. Use what you have, though. No judgment. So that looks great. To this, I'm going to add the pizza water. 
I basically just waited for that brandy, which I wasn't really using brandy today, but brandy to cook off. That's when I would add something like the miso water, just until this gets a little bit thicker, maybe reduce it by half. Um, I want it to start looking a little bit saucy. And I do want to note that miso paste is really like a healthy live fermented product. But when you're cooking it like this in a hot pan, it's just tasty. All the good like fermented probiotics in it now are, they're gone. <laughs> so I'm doing this for flavor, not for, not for health. Once it gets a little less soupy, that is when I'm going to add my heavy cream. Let me turn this up just a little bit. So while we're cooking, uh, or while we're getting the sauce to come together, the halibut is just off to the side right now finishing cooking through, um, which is great. Sometimes letting fish rest helps you really dial in the doneness. Um, so you're not just cooking it all the way through in a hot pan and then having a few minutes of carryover cooking, you know, once you've taken it off. Carryover cooking can sometimes be the reason why your fish is overcooked um, because once you take it off the pan, it still has residual heat that cooks it. So um, this looks a little bit thicker to me now. Adding heavy cream and peppercorns. So I'm going to do maybe like two teaspoons. It's a lot of pepper. So if you don't like peppercorns, you can always cut down on the amount of peppercorns that you're using. If you want something a little milder, uh, green peppercorns are actually more, more classic for a sauce like this. You can use dried green peppercorns or even um, they come in brine. You honestly could probably leave the peppercorns out altogether and just have a really delicious creamy sauce for this and, and just don't call it steak au plat. I'm going to let this get a little bit soupy so that it coats the back of the spoon. We're not quite there yet, but it's tasting so good. I will say for the cream, I feel like some of you might ask me for substitutions on it. I never have heavy cream in my fridge, but I like having it in my fridge for this particular recipe. So what I actually do is I'll buy, you know, um, eight ounces of, of it or whatever the smallest container is. And then I'll just freeze the rest of it. So um, if I put it into something like an ice cube tray or just measure it out into smaller, like, I don't know, just like to-go containers that I've collected over the years, I'll just leave it in my freezer for another day. And that actually works really well when you're cooking cream. This looks perfect. So you can see if I drag the spoon through the sauce, it doesn't immediately fill in where that space is. But this is like the perfect texture for this. So I used frozen, like previously frozen cream for this. Like if you're using it and not cooking it, it becomes super grainy after you've frozen it. But once you start cooking it and reintroducing it to heat, it is perfect. So this is just going to go right over the fish here. Oh my God, it's delicious. And there you go, halibut au bois, halibut with a creamy peppercorn sauce. I'll bring this over here. Um, I'm going to take a bite of the steak. There's plenty of sauce in here to go around, which is why I think having something like broccoli or potatoes on this side would be really nice. Mm. Oh my God, so good. This is such a fun recipe and it's so delicious. I had it last night and I guess I'm going to have it two nights in a row because now I have a whole plate again. Um, until I see you next time, live wild.